While the 980 Ti and Titan X from Nvidia might be super exciting cards, the cards that are really flying off shelves aren't usually the, those top tier bank breaking beast machines. They're the more reasonable workhorses. Just like with cars, people like to look at the top end for what they want and then trickle down from there for what they can actually realistically afford. But let's take a moment to leave that sports car on the lot and take a spin in the sedan. Like this video if you want to see Scrapyard Wars 3. The Mastercase 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid-tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Click now to learn more. As far as raw tech specs go, the GTX 950 is rocking 768 CUDA cores with a base clock of 1024 and a boost clock of 1188. On the memory side of things, that has 2 gigs of GDDR5 running at 6.6 .6 gigabits per second on a 128-bit wide memory interface. It also supports four displays and two-way SLI. NVIDIA is lining up the performance of this product with their previous GTX 760, and all of that was probably pretty expected. What was really cool with the launch of this was that NVIDIA brought to the table a whole bunch of software options. First up, in terms of those software options, we have latency. NVIDIA has built some stuff into GeForce Experience that will automatically improve the latency in MOBA games, and by a pretty considerable amount. In their testing, they marked the input latency of a GTX 650 in Dota 2 to be about 80 milliseconds, and the input latency of a 950 to be only 45 milliseconds. A pretty massive improvement of 35 milliseconds. They do this by reducing the number of pre-rendered frames from two to just one, so that they no longer have to buffer multiple frames, which made a fairly significant amount of input latency. After that, the changes become a little bit more basic and focus around game settings like setting it to full screen instead of just borderless mode, which, while it's helpful for compatibility, can hurt your input latency numbers. So you can optimize your MOBA game for optimal refresh rate, frame rate, latency, and image quality in one click pretty slick, but for those of you on higher end NVIDIA GPU, you may be wondering where the heck your latency enhancing button is. Well, NVIDIA is only launching this improvement for 950 owners at first, but never fear, it will be coming at a later date. Next up we have Stream, but I'll get to what exactly Stream is in a moment. With the Stream update, Shadow Play has gotten easier to use. Now when you're in game, if you hold Alt and then press a Z, a handy in-game menu will pop up with your Shadow Play options, and they even now allow you to trim and upload your videos directly to YouTube at up to 4K resolution and 60 FPS. Badass. Also, in the previously mentioned Alt-Z menu, you may have noticed the new Stream button. This allows you to either just stream your gameplay directly to a friend to show off that fancy new title that your buddy didn't have the cash for but wants to see and whatnot, or show them how to beat a certain encounter in a certain game, or even play with them with Game Stream Co-op. Co-op supports mirrored controls and integrated voice chat, so you can coach someone on how to play a game and share the controls with them at the same time, or play games that actually support co-op mode, like, say, Trine 3. NVIDIA recommends an up and down stream of around 7 megabits per second for both the host and the guest PCs, respectively. Now, finally, benchmarking and performance. Here with me today, I have not one, but two badass graphics cards, one from ASUS and one from EVGA. Let's get the showdown started. The ASUS 950 Strix is $10 cheaper on Amazon at $170 and features a stock memory setup with an advertised boost clock speed of 1355, although that doesn't really mean much. If you're wondering why that doesn't mean much, check out this video here where I investigate the inner workings of the mysterious GPU boost. The Strix features dual DVI out, DisplayPort, and HDMI on the back, and is kind of a compact design with a smaller heatsink and smaller fans than the EVGA card we'll see in a moment. It also features six pin power and a nice flat matte black PCB on the back of the card. The EVGA 950 for the win card is a little longer and $10 more expensive on Amazon at $180, still featuring a stock memory setup but with an improved advertised clock speed of 1405. For I.O., it has triple display port, HDMI, and DVI. It features an 8-pin power instead of 6-pin power, has a nice wicked looking backplate, and a much beefier cooler. Performance-wise, it was rather unsurprising in terms of results. Not bad, mind you, just 
unsurprising. Unfortunately, I don't have an R9 380 to test against. Uh, that would have been a fairly interesting comparison at only $20 more, but I think you guys will get the gist of it anyways. The performance difference between the two 950s wasn't huge, but in my opinion, probably worth the $10 delta. To be fair though, there's something to be said about the compact size of the ASUS Strix card. A lot of people are building small systems these days and may not be looking for longer cards. Just something to keep in mind. In terms of raw GPU boost performance, the ASUS Strix 950 got a boost clock of 1430 MHz. Solid, more than their advertised number, that's cool. The EVGA for the Win 950 got 1493, however. For the same GPU, having a delta of 63 MHz is actually fairly significant and pretty interesting. In conclusion, I was happy to see Nvidia drop some really cool new software tech for both performance and raw features. Both system builders and mid-tier gaming rig buyers have a new variable to consider, which is always a good thing. More options is good. And it's a pretty solid card at that. Awesome show. Great job. And on that subject, MassDrop.com, which is based around the concept of group buys, where people would get together and they'd like a bunch of people on a forum or whatever would be like, yeah, what if we all bought this thing? Do you think the manufacturer would give us a deal? Turns out that's a thing, but it was hard to stay organized and you had to trust your money to one person in the group who from time to time would run off with it because it was people on the internet. Well, now we have an organized, trustworthy place to do that, massdrop.com. So right now they're featuring a drop on the Sennheiser HD7 DJs that feature a 270 degree swiveling ear cup so you can go ahead and get that out of the way of your ear DJ style if you want to hear what's going on around you or let's say for example you have a baby that you're supposed to hear when he or she is crying or whatever else and that drop is already down to 43% off the retail price if you guys want to check it out all you got to do is head over to draw slash Linus Tech Tips and you can sign up for the drop mass drop negotiates deals directly with the manufacturer or an authorized distributor to ensure that you guys are getting not only a great deal but genuine merchandise they're good guys so get signed up for the site and start browsing because they have a lot more than just headsets and headphones they got things like knives and keyboards and all kinds of cool things thanks for watching guys if this video sucked you know what to do but if it was awesome get subscribed hit that like button or even consider supporting us directly by using our amazon affiliate code to shop at well amazon buying a cool t-shirt that is not this one or with a monthly direct contribution through the forum now if you're done doing all that kind of stuff you're probably wondering what to watch next so as i can see it behind brandon there you should check out the video on the mineral oil cooled computer we built right here actually